Um, honored to be joined now by General Petraeus, a uh, huge uh, fan of General Petraeus. He's been a supporter of the America's Future Series and a host of our events for many years. Uh, and also a company that um, General Petraeus uh, knows well, Jared Shepard of uh, Hypori, will be joining us. And they're going to have a conversation about advanced technologies, their company, this sort of thing. Um, and uh, I, I want to just tee this up, and I would like uh, to say that I can't thank uh, uh, Major General Kreider, General Petraeus, and uh, Jared uh, Shepard of Hypori for joining us. And I hope you all enjoy this wonderful conversation. Hello, everybody. I'm Kim Kreider. Uh, I'm here today as part of the America Future Series uh, session uh, on Zero Trust, Bring Your Own Device in Defense and the Commercial Sector. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be with you here today to host uh, what I'm sure is going to be an amazing panel. Uh, today, we have two fabulous guests with us, uh, General uh, David Petraeus, uh, as well as Jared Shepard. I'm going to briefly introduce uh, General Petraeus and Gerald to, uh, Jared to you. Uh, I know that, uh, General Petraeus, sir, you uh, don't need much of an introduction, but just uh, in case everybody hasn't kept, caught up with all of the amazing things that you've been doing lately, uh, let me quickly roll into it. Uh, so General Petraeus is a partner in the global investment firm KKR and chairman of the KKR Global Institute, which he established in 2013. The Global Institute supports KKR's investment process, portfolio companies, and investors with analysis of geopolitical and strategic risks. General Petraeus is also a member of the boards of directors of Optiv and OneStream, a strategic advisor of Semperis, co-chairman of the International Advisory Board of Advanced Navigation, a personal venture capitalist, and a visiting professor lecturer at Yale University, uh, as well as a speaker with the Washington Speakers Bureau and co-author with Andrew Roberts on the forthcoming book, Conflict. Prior to joining KKR, General Petraeus served 37 years uh, in the U.S. military, culminating his career with six consecutive commands as a general officer, five of which were in combat, including command of the surge in Iraq, uh, command of U.S. Central Command, and command of NATO U.S. forces in Afghanistan. Following his service, General Petraeus served as director of the CIA during a period of significant achievements in the global war on terror. Sir, thank you so much for being here today. Great to be with you, Kim, and thanks for your own. Uh, 35 years of service in uniform. Thank you, sir. Now, Jared Shepard, it is an absolute pleasure, Jared, to have you here with us today. Uh, you, you as well have done some amazing things in your career, uh, and we're here today to learn about your amazing company, Hypori. Uh, Jared Shepard is the president and CEO of Hypori. Hypori is an award-winning software as a service company transforming secure edge through zero trust technologies for federal and commercial customers by breaking the ties to the physical device. Now more than ever, as we all know, cybersecurity is critical to the functions of our public and private sectors and to protect sensitive data on any device from any network. Unlike other solutions that are tied to the device and potentially impinge on user privacy, Hypori breaks the binds to hardware by enabling remote users zero trust access to cloud powered enterprise apps through a separate secure virtual workspace. With no data in transit and no data at rest, Hypori guarantees 100% separation of commercial and personal data while maintaining privacy of edge devices significantly reducing cost, security, and liability risk associated with the traditional mobile device management ways of accessing the edge. We're going to get a lot more into this amazing technology that Jared has spearheaded uh, in the company Hypori uh, as we get into our conversations today. But Jared, thank you so much for being here with us. Well, ma'am, I mean, between between you and General Petraeus, I'm, I am a, a, a mouse among giants. Um, and, and by the way, you did a great job. If, if you're looking for a job, I, I mean, you could be right in my sales team. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'm, I'm honored for that. All right, let's jump into it, General Petraeus. So, you know, many would say that this idea of bring your own device and defense, defense of our nation, national security, uh, are in direct conflict with each other. Can you tell us, it, it, from your perspective, why bring your own defense, uh, I'm sorry, bring your own device, BYOD, bring your own device and defense actually uh, are mutually supportive of each other and critical uh, in today's warfighting environment? 
Well, and first of all, I should acknowledge to the audience that I was so impressed uh, with Jared and Hypori when I met him at a veterans event uh, some actually years ago now uh, that I said I wanted to invest with him. Uh, and so I am among the venture investments uh, that I have. Uh, Hypori is one of those, and I'm very enthusiastic about it, noting also that Jared also served in uniform. Um, played a key role in some very important IT initiatives that we had during the surge in Iraq. The idea of bring your own device uh, being enabled by Hypori is hugely important. It's especially so uh, for the reserves and National Guard, to some degree for active duty as well. The bottom line is that the Department of Defense can't buy a device for every single person in uniform. Uh, and again, that's particularly true uh, of reserve components who have to stay connected uh, with their headquarters, with their commands uh, in a variety of activities. And then beyond that, there's an awful lot that is done in what's now termed confidential unclassified information. This is what goes over the nipper net uh, for those of us who have served in uniform. Uh, it's not classified information, but it's still quite sensitive. Uh, an awful lot of our logistics uh, information is an administrative information. Uh, is sent uh, over that network. And the idea that you could on your own device, so laptop, uh, iPhone, iPad, what have you, that you can, in, in essence, sequester this virtual uh, space over which you can, with confidence and security, conduct uh, business for the Department of Defense uh, connected with your duties uh, in uniform and do it again securely, sequester it again from what else you do on your device, this is a real breakthrough. Um, and so it enables real efficiency. Uh, again, individuals who are out there in the commercial world, the civilian world, uh, and don't have to have all these different devices or actually are not given a device uh, by the military, now all of a sudden can do military business on that device and do it with confidence. So this is a considerable breakthrough. Uh, it, when it was explained to me, when Jared laid it out for me, uh, and then when I dug into it, uh, as I mentioned, I was hugely impressed. And uh, again, at the end of the day, that's why I'm one of Jared's investors. Thank you, sir. Really uh, appreciate you laying that out for us. Uh, and why this technology is so critical in, in bringing together our ability for military operations. And as you mentioned, you know, those uh, activities that, you know, we are doing today on Nippernet, we are, you know, they're, they're uh, uh, sensitive, it's sensitive information that's out there uh, in an unclassified network uh, that we absolutely want to protect. And there's been a lot of discussion over the years in trying to bring your own device, uh, because if you're in the field, if you're out uh, you know, in, in an environment where you've got to be able to get access to commercial devices to communicate back, you need to be able to do that in a safe and secure way. Uh, yeah, and, it's, it's look, true of many of those that operate in the greater defense sphere as well. So defense contractors, again, think of the, when we were in Iraq, for example, um, yes, we had 165,000 American men and women in uniform. We actually had more contractors. Now, not all those contractors by any means uh, needed to be on a device to do their missions, but quite a few of them did. Uh, and again, I'm not, I don't know that we provided a military device for all of them. And so this again provides a real capability that I think enhances security in a very significant way. Excellent point. Excellent point. Bringing all of those critical partners uh, in to be able to communicate very effectively. So, Jared, this, this really kind of leads into my next question for you. Uh, and maybe you can give us a little bit more of the background of why you started uh, Hypori or how you actually got into this uh, in providing this technology. I know, I know there's a story there uh, <laughs> and, and how Hypori and the capability that it provides uh, evolved from originally being developed to solve a single problem set now very much a dual use solution with applications not just for defense uh but across national security uh and the commercial sector and really sort of uh getting into some of the things that joan petraeus is talking about how did this capability come about your involvement in it 
Uh, and how did Hypori evolve to become uh, this zero trust, bring your own device platform that that clearly has such critical value? Yes, ma'am. Well, I mean, that'd be a, that'd be a, a long story, but I'll, I'll try to keep it really short. So I actually bought the IP out using my first company. Um, as General Petraeus noted, uh, we had spent, I really built my first company actually in Iraq and Afghanistan supporting the, 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 the warfighter. Uh, you know, doing, you know, work with JIDO, doing work with special forces, et cetera. And, and we, we built it with the intent of being a very niche capability. And, and it is a part of what's called the NSA's commercial solutions for classifieds program. So it has, it is actually allowed to be used for classified communications in very specific environments prescribed by the NSA. Um, but we kind of realized once we had bought this tech and started to deploy this out that man is such a, a, a bigger thing has such has mo so much more potential to solve problems for uh, not just the you know, Department of Defense or the intelligence community or special operations, but for everybody. Uh, uh, as as General Petraeus noted, uh, for the the defense industrial base, you know, which is you know all targeted all the time by foreign and, na and nation state actors. Um, but this is also, you know, protecting information is not a unique problem to the Department of Defense, right? This this extends into healthcare, it extends into finance, it extends, I mean, it, it, uh, across the board in industry. And so as we began to, to, to figure that out and, and spend money and time in developing that and, you know, raising money and investing, you know, being a a, a small service disabled better known small business you know a guy who used to serve in the military could turn something in into something that matters and affects the people who I used to serve with is is a huge deal to us right and my team is very focused on giving back to the nation and you know whether it's our nonprofit or his ethos you know General Petraeus you you, you also support it I appreciate that sir um but the the dual use piece of this we started out hardcore about security and uh, General Morrison would say we're the most tested platform in the Department of Defense. I, and I, I would agree with them. I think we're actually exceeded significantly. Um, we've been through so many different red teams, DOD and IC red teams, um, and and we're we're very good. Nobody's unhackable, but we're we're very 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 good, um, better than any, anything else that, that that any of the red teams have seen on the market today. Um, and and that matters because. We were like, man, security is the way. What we've really found actually in deployment is, you talk about the dual use piece of this, it's not just security as well, it's privacy. It's people using their personal device. To be honest, they don't want big DOD looking over their shoulder at what they're using their personal device for. It's their device, right? And there should be isolation in that privacy and they should have a right to be able to do whatever they wanna do on their own personal device, but still be empowered to securely communicate uh, you know, with their their employer, with the government, with their you know whatever else it happens to be, right? So, so while we thought we thought this was really purely a security play, what we found is it's actually a privacy play with really good security. Um, so the idea that that edge user can maintain their privacy and have access to to secure information because we by design don't send data, we don't have data in transit or at rest on the edge device. So the edge device actually isn't exposed to any of the liabilities or risks of accessing that secure environment. Thank you so much, Jared, for laying that out for us and, and for kind of helping us think through the applications beyond just defense and uh, the importance of both securing uh, the data and protecting it, as well as affording a, a certain amount of privacy uh, for those users. Now, John Petraeus, um, you know, we've seen in, uh, how the federal government and the DOD in particular have been putting forward a number of uh, uh, zero trust directives, a heavy emphasis in, in zero trust and protecting uh, data and assuring that we can authenticate users and machines that are wanting to get access to data. Uh, and it's really changing the cybersecurity approach uh, for the government um, and as well as uh, across across defense, across, across all aspects of the government, and certainly has taken hold in our private sector as well. Uh, can you give a perspective to our audience here today uh, on how these zero trust directives are having an impact, uh, how it's changing the cybersecurity approach and landscape uh, across the government and across the private sector from what you've seen? Sure, let me talk about it in, in a big sense. Um, as you mentioned, I'm on the board of Optiv, uh, it's the largest pure play cybersecurity services firm we believe in the world. Uh, and our view is that the right cybersecurity uh, solution is one that is designed for a company. Um, it is uh, comprehensive uh, based on a general 
uh, list, if you will, of capabilities that every cybersecurity solution needs and then tweak for the particular company. By the way, that's about 80 to 85 individual capabilities, applications, uh, products. That has to be integrated, it has to be managed, and it needs to be based on zero trust principles. So a design comprehensive integrated managed solution based on zero trust principles. And that last element uh, ensures that you just can't roam the entire network with a single uh, password and a single identity verification. Uh, so in a sense, what you're doing is you are compartmenting uh, the data that is in a particular network. And by the way, one of the pioneering uh, elements of this was when the CIA contracted out its cloud support. Um, in fact, when I was the director of the CIA, we were collecting so much data that it was outrunning our ability to create the storage space and manage it ourselves. We realized, you know, at the end of the day, we're really not an IT services company. Perhaps we could get a professional IT services company to do this for us. Uh, Amazon won the process, uh, the contract, and that's the ultimate zero trust uh, network, if you will, or data storage system, because of course you have to be a uh, read on to, or again, you, you just can't have free roam of all the data that exists uh, in that agency, uh, unless you again have the access that is granted for that. Um, so in large measure, that's what's being done here. Uh, the DOD, the federal government, they're just stressing this uh, so that, again, uh, no one can have free run of all of the data that is uh, available. And this is true of every corporation. Again, KKR, we own over 120 companies, have minority investments in another 100. Uh, we have had cybersecurity uh, breaches and challenges. And we've gone back and looked at all of them. And we are instituting zero trust as one of the elements, uh, again, in this comprehensive, integrated, managed cybersecurity solution that we advocate for our companies. This is quite revolutionary. It's very, very important. Uh, that's why the government and DOD are pushing it uh, so hard. It's not easy. Again, this is, a, this is an architecture that you have to design. It, it doesn't just sort of fall out, it takes a great deal of thought about who should have access to what information, um, and then establishing the architecture and ensuring that the identity and verification management process for each compartment, if you will, uh, is all functioning smoothly. So not a trivial uh, matter whatsoever, uh, but Hypori once again really helps you with this, uh, as Jared has explained. Wonderful. Yeah. So Zero Trust is, has really um, kind of laid the foundation for a capability like Hypori uh, to come in and, and really add some value, uh, you know, driving us towards the, the need for this infrastructure where you can compartmentalize, as you mentioned, you can separate out uh, who's using, uh, who's getting access, how they're getting access. Uh, are they authorized to have that access? Can we authenticate who they are in getting that access and doing it in a very uh, comprehensive way is what these directives are doing, wanting to get to more of a managed approach. Uh, and we've seen a lot of technologies out there that are that have been helping us work through and, and providing the basis on how we can satisfy these kind of zero trust principles uh, and zero trust frameworks. Uh, but here comes Hypori doing something unique. So, Jared, let's talk a little bit of, of more about that. Uh, today, the predominant technology that enables remote access from mobile devices is still uh, mobile device management. Uh, and it, it too, can provide you know, support and assistance and, and be part of this overall zero trust architecture. But how is Hypori Halo different from that? Uh, what is Hypori Halo doing that that takes us all to the next level. Uh, sure. And what are the security implications yet to, to be thought of here? Sure. So I, it, it kind of back to the privacy thing that we talked about earlier. There's a couple of things. So one is, is you know, we are not MDM, right? I get compared to MDM a lot. Uh, uh, we are not MDM. We're also not a virtual desktop infrastructure, right? We're we're something different. And and uh, the way in which we're different is, is you know, as General Petraeus laid out earlier, and as you highlighted on the zero trust approach, the idea of zero trust is trust nothing, verify everything, right? And, and so we, by design, the software by design, assumes every endpoint is actually compromised. 
which is fundamentally different than MDM. MDM actually has to have control of the endpoint to provide some level of security. We're opposite. We actually assume that the endpoint is actually already compromised. And so we never allow the software on the endpoint to actually directly interact with the data that we're protecting. So then that way, even if it is compromised, it, your, your information that you're intending to secure remains safe because there's no data in transit, no data at rest. It means the state of that edge device does not present a threat. Um, that also helps from a privacy standpoint because MDM fundamentally has to have root control of an edge device, even if it's just for a specific security container. But if your personal device begins to misbehave in some way, shape, or form, you contracted malware from going to whatever website that you happen to go to, and that malware probes that security container, that MDM is now going to report to the enterprise what your edge device is doing to include your personal information. Um, so, so we really truly took a, we don't trust the edge device. We, in fact, from a security standpoint, the intent is we've enabled you to collapse the attack surface that is now the edge, right? You know, today the edge, the attack surface of the edge is massive because it's every edge device that's out there. By using a platform like ours, we actually enable you to consolidate that down into the gateways that enter your enterprise and you can defend a few points very well rather than a ton of points so-so. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, clarifying and illuminating those critical differences. Um, certainly assuring that those uh, end devices uh, can effectively connect into the network based on the assumption that an end device can be compromised really helps us bring in this, this uh, bring your own device approach. I mean, it doesn't matter what the device is, I think is, is fundamentally what you're saying. Uh, the device becomes transparent because of the way in which you've implemented this capability. The user can still use any device uh, yes, uh, and, and securely and effectively uh, get access to the information that they need. And, now, and MDM, you know, the, the unique Nate things about MDM. MDM is not bad. It's just it has limitations that are very difficult to to overcome, especially when you're talking about endpoint control and privacy and trust. Um, but the 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 advantages that we had, if you're an MDM shop and you still want to use MDM for what MDM is very good at, which is like inventory management, you can deploy MDM inside of Hypori and use that for your software management and your software deployments. But you don't have to be in control of the endpoint any longer. Excellent. Thank you so much. So let, let me just ask you a one follow up question here, because we've talked about how this kind of capability certainly has applications across uh, government, defense, private sector. But getting back specifically to you know, some of our uh, military applications of this um, and what we see potentially happening uh, on the battlefield uh, of the future, um, as, as was discussed, and John Petraeus mentioned this, you know, clearly this kind of capability uh, can can help us assure and secure uh, some of the uh, confidential unclassified information, the sensitive data that is that is passed uh, over uh, unclassified networks, uh, logistics in particular, some administrative data. Uh, but do you see this having a practical, tactical, uh, or other than unclassified application in the future? I, you know, I do. We, we've actually seen a lot of interest here, even just in the last few weeks, um, from you know organizations like you know TACOM and others inside of the military that are responsible for logistics, logistics management, movement. Um, in fact, uh, I just spoke with with 18th Airborne Corps, and they're like, "Hey, we we do we have a, a our own application warehouse in which they have they've worked really hard. I mean, 18th Airborne Corps is on the cutting edge of software development internally to the core, and but they have apps where they track their PT, their PT scores, their fitness. Uh, uh, those kind of things can all be made available in this environment while still sustaining that 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 privacy and that protection. Uh, we've seen on the the Air Force side of the house, the Air Force is actually looking at integrating these these whoop bands potentially right and so they can actually check on the health of their pilots and but they have to do so in a secure way in which that information doesn't bleed out and isn't available to an, an external actor that would go after that so there, there's a lot of unclassified support missions that Hypori can actually help in um and then of course I, I pointed out earlier you know we are an NSA CSFC platform which which means we do have the ability to support classified network environments and and we do today um, now that's different than the unclassified side of the house, and, and I don't want to go too far into detail on that one, but there, there's the, the idea that anywhere that you could provide connectivity to an edge device, and the edge device doesn't have to be controlled and can potentially be compromised, also the network can be potentially compromised, and you're not, you're not streaming anything other than change pixels to the edge device, 
It means that that attack surface for a nation state actor or for a bad adversary or for anything is, is a very difficult attack surface to go after. So I think there's a lot of implications and I think we're only gonna see this methodology of protecting data on the edge grow. Thanks, Jared. John Petraeus, um, let's take it a, a little bit deeper here. And when we think about uh, attack surfaces and threats from nation, nation state actors, uh, you know, certainly we've all been watching uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict play out. Uh, we've seen threats to communications, uh, you know, being presented to us live and in real time uh, as some of our satellite uh, communications have been attacked and other methods of communications have been cyber attacked. I mean, it is a, a cyber uh, war that, that, we're, that we're seeing play out here. Uh, and then, of course, we see, you know, continued uh, concerns from uh, China uh, and uh, its desires to exfiltrate information uh, from the U.S. Uh, and concerns about the, the use of applications like TikTok uh, on uh, government devices or on personal devices uh, where you might have trying to access government, use government information. Uh, from your perspective, when we think about these nation state actors and the threats coming from them, uh, how does Hypori uh, help us deal with this, uh, with these kinds of concerns? Well, first, let me actually just talk about what the threat um, actor activity is these days, because certainly there are nation state threats of various types. Um, in some cases, they're trying to disrupt command and control, deny access to uh, the internet, uh, shut down .gov sites, um, interfere with command control communications, uh, and, and so forth and so on. There are also nation state actors that are in the criminal space trying to generate money for North Korea uh, or what have you. Others that are trying to influence uh, our debates in democratic societies, interfere with our election processes and so forth. Uh, to vacuum up intellectual property, to to uh, vacuum up data, uh, all of these activities are ongoing. And and there's a bit of a misconception that Russia really didn't go after Ukraine and the U.S. when they launched the invasion uh, of Ukraine, the most recent one, uh, on 24 February of last year. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, Russian Russia threw everything at Ukraine. It also threw a lot at the United States. You may recall prior to the invasion that uh unprecedented warning by the president of the united states about this talking about bringing up your shields and, and so forth um and what happened is that we actually had gotten better uh and some of the investment we've made in our organizations paid off as did the support that we provided to ukraine which suffered devastating attacks in the past to its gov sites to its uh, electrical generation and transmission infrastructure and so forth. And this time they fended it off by and large. Again, there were some disruptions and so forth, uh, but nowhere near what was feared. Again, it's because we helped them. They helped themselves. Of course, Ukraine's well known for its IT capabilities and skills. Uh, just ask those in Silicon Valley that come from Ukraine and have great startups. Um, but what really has happened here is that the U.S. has finally begun to catch up, if you will, with some of the other countries that proved to be more agile in developing their national cybersecurity capabilities, such as the U.K. Uh, it took us too long to develop the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, but we built it in the previous administration, and they've had two great leaders uh, in a row there. Uh, we have a national cybersecurity czar now that positions back in the White House. Uh, Cybercom is a full-fledged combatant command, no longer a sub-combatant command as it was for far too long. They have the authority to defend forward, um, not just react. Uh, that's very, very important. There's been additional investment in the Department of Justice and also the FBI, especially when it comes to ransomware. And in some cases now, the, the Bitcoin that's given to the ransomware attackers actually has seized back this kind of activity. So all of this has begun uh, to pay off. Again, this is about a comprehensive, integrated, uh, managed approach to life. Uh, and a component of that, very clearly, uh, can be what Hypori does bring. 
because its capabilities, again, can be an integral part of this comprehensive integrated managed cybersecurity solution based on zero trust principles that any organization should have, not just in the private sector, but very prominently uh, in, in the military, Department of Defense, uh, intelligence community, other government agencies uh, and departments as well. Um, so that's what's exciting here, uh, as with any time that there's a new product or new capability or application, um, it, it fills a gap, uh, it helps to shore up very significantly uh, and to address what really was a vulnerability in the past. And that's the bottom line, and that's why it's exciting. Absolutely. Um, all right, Jared, I'm going to give you the last word here. Okay. Where do we see this going? What is the future of Hypori? Uh, and how is Hypori going to continue to evolve to uh, offer a competitive advantage uh, to our warfighters uh, and as well as to those in uh, private industry? I mean, it's, it's you know, and General Petraeus kind of out outlined it before. You know, this is only one component of uh, what has to be a much larger and grander strategy for, for the federal government, for, for industry. I mean, and, and cybersecurity is everybody's job. It's it's the one thing in the world that we still have a bad habit of we blame the victim for, right? You know, so like when you get hacked, we go, well, what were you doing to prevent being hacked? And 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 it's so it, teaching that culture and whether it's you know, teaching our children or businesses or our banks or our hospitals uh, or the government, right? How to effectively protect and isolate information and do so in a responsible way that maintains people's rights, privacy and others. Um, but also it, it ensures that we protect our IP and the things that are important to the, the future of our economy and the growth of our government. Um, I, I mean, I think we're going to, and we always say like, we're going to change the way that people look at the edge. Um, we give you the power and speed of cloud because our virtual devices run in a cloud environment and we give those to the edge devices, which means, you know, something in this form factor may not be able to keep up with something that I can run inside of a cloud environment like AWS or Azure or Google. Um, all those the, the technology that's evolving there, especially in high speed compute and others that we're seeing is, is growing so fast that we're creating a mechanism in which to render that speed and that progress out on the edge. And, and hopefully, I, I think we can continue to be disruptive and make a difference and have a positive impact uh, uh, on, on the way that people look at cybersecurity and privacy and protecting their information. So it's, it's, it's a really exciting time. We just closed our round B and we're growing fast. So, so uh, we're, we're just gonna you know, keep trying to bring on good people, smart people, and uh, uh, keep focused on the mission. Absolutely. It is an exciting time. And thank you so much for uh, your dedication uh, to this to this endeavor and bringing this technology forward. It's absolutely critical, uh, as we've discussed today. As you said, you know, cybersecurity is job number one, and it's everyone's responsibility. Uh, and we need to get out of uh, you know, placing blame on the user. Uh, we need to get out of being so dependent on uh, assuring the security of the edge devices, just assume those edge devices are compromised uh, and, and you know, rise above that with a capability that will allow you to have secu secure communications that, that frees you from uh, the hardware that, that doesn't worry about you know, that particular piece of hardware that you're using, but provides you with the secure access that also protects the privacy uh, of the user and the privacy of the information that's being uh, that's being uh, transmitted across because uh, it's about the data, right? It's it's about protecting the data. And as General Petraea said, in a comprehensive, managed way uh, that is designed around that particular organization's uh, needs and the users that they have and the kinds of information that they have built on these zero trust models. Uh, so thank you both, General Petraea, sir. Thank you so much for being a part of our conversations today, for shedding light uh, on what the, what the real threat is on those nation state actors and how they continue to try to uh, and have uh, continued to attempt to thwart our efforts, but uh, our abilities to stay out in front of those nation state actors uh, is enabled uh, by innovation, uh, by the kinds of disruptive innovation uh, that Hypori brings. Sir, thank you again for being here. Great to be with you, Kim, and great to be with you, Jared. Congratulations. Sure. Thank you very much for your support. Appreciate it. And Jared, Kim, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. I, I appreciate your, uh, you hosting for us.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Jared, for helping to push this forward. I'm Kim Kreider, uh, Executive Chair for AI Innovation at Deloitte. Uh, and uh, innovation within the cybersecurity arena is absolutely something we need to continue to push on. Thank you so much, America Future Series, for helping us host this critical discussion on zero trust and bringing your own device and how we can make that happen for defense uh, and the private sector.